Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you. You've got no idea for me how great it is to see all these faces. I can't see your smiles, but I can see the twinkle in your eyes. I can see that you've had a good break. I can see that you're now ready to uh, warmly welcome Jan and I back into the fold and uh, to listen to things that we have to share with you from God. That's important for us all, that we all be ready to listen to what God has to say to us. It's important too for us to understand that uh, sometimes, uh, uh, like the saying, um, you can't judge a book by its cover. Sometimes good works doesn't, doesn't hide a good heart. Sometimes good works doesn't hide a good heart. We're going to think about that a little later as we worship together. But it's so good to see you one and all. I hope you've got, I hope you've got this sheet of paper. They're, they're at the front. You, at any time of the worship, just go and get one if you want one. And there's pens there too. And it says here, good works for 2020, 2022. Welcome to 2022. This is the first opportunity I've had to say that to you. Welcome to 2022. I'm going to say that quite a bit a little later on as well. But in this, on this sheet of paper, are um, five blank spaces, just five spaces, for you to write what you think would be good works for 2022. Think about it. What might be good works for 2022? And then a little later in the meeting, I'm going to ask you to shout those out. Just shout. There's no... Uh, there's no uh, it's not going to point out whether that's a good answer or not. There's none of that going to happen. No, no, no prize either. But I'd like, if you wouldn't mind, to just write down what you think might be good words for 2022. Things that you could do. And maybe help, but if you've got kids, help them with this too. And then there's, uh, there's uh, we're looking at Matthew 25, where there are 10 bridesmaids uh, are preparing to welcome the groom. And we know that, that the groom is Jesus Christ that is coming to uh, to take up his bride. And that's the church, the people who believe in him and trust him and serve him, who want his life to be lived here through them. We're going to consider that, and we're going to consider at least half of that, half of that uh, parable, Matthew 25. And so there's a lamp there. There's a lamp. And if you're wondering what the image is behind me, it's the lamp, flame, just for clarification. Now we're going to have some announcements and then proceed in our worship. So it's lovely to see everybody here together. Let's clap our hands and welcome one another because it's good to be here. Well, it is good to uh, be back uh, at church and uh, we welcome you again here this morning. Um, firstly, for the announcements, we're going to keep them fairly short. Um, Throughout, um, uh, I guess throughout this year, you'll be getting calendars uh, like this. They're either, uh, you're getting, getting them online if you're getting them uh, by email or if you've got them in your personal file, make sure you grab them out. The information, everything in the announcements uh, that are said will be uh, on, on here, uh, unless they miss something, which I'll uh, let you know about that uh, shortly. But uh, calendar, put it on the fridge and then you'll know what's happening in, in our core uh, through the months. Uh, as they uh, progress. So for uh, February, the calendars are in the personal files or you've received them uh, via email. I'll just point out a, a couple of um, things. Uh, this morning, uh, small groups are resuming um, uh, fairly shortly, but if you, and if you want to know more about uh, what small groups are available, uh, then please uh, see Yvonne. Uh, she'll give you some idea of the small groups. Some of them in, have been continuing on uh, as uh, on, online, um, but uh, some are resuming in the next week or two. Um, F3, which is I think the exercise uh, group, uh, they're starting up uh, on the 1st of February this coming Tuesday. Band practice also starts uh, on Wednesday for the, uh, for the bandsmen, so be here uh, 7.30 and make sure you bring on your music. I think all that's got to be handed in, so um, if you can do that and be ready on, uh, to start at 7.30. Uh, the prayer breakfast, which isn't on the calendar, but um, is on this month at 8 a.m. It is here at the uh, at the hall. So this coming uh, Saturday, 8 a.m. will be the uh, first uh, prayer breakfast. I think that's all. I think we just need to uh, be reminded that a lot of things um, are starting up, and just be aware of uh, your 
protocols that are in place with uh, masks and all those sort of things and uh, yeah, in, in, enjoy and, and get into the practices and things that are available. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to see so many beautiful faces uh, today. Before we start worship, um, I just wanted to share a verse that has been, or a couple of verses that have been on my heart as we start this um, new year. And they come from Romans 12, hence the message version, uh, verses 11 to 13. It says, don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of, for the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians and in, uh, be innovative in hospitality. So how are you entering this year? Maybe with hope and expectation? that this year might be a bit better than the last. Uh, maybe you're trying not to have too much expectation as to not be let down. This is a common question that we get um, at the start of a new year, and I'm sure that you've had a think about what this year might be for you. Um, but I want to challenge you to think about this on more of a micro level. How are you entering this week? How did you enter last week? How are you entering church this morning? How are you entering worship? God requires us to come to him and approach him. So how are you coming to him this morning? Maybe you're a bit tired. Um, maybe it's been a big week and it's the start of new schedules, um, which can be really tiring. Maybe you came because it's what we do on Sunday and we're excited that the schedule's back. We're back to regular church on Sunday. Um, maybe you're super excited to be in fellowship of all of us here today. Maybe you uh, have come with great expectation of what God will do. Like Paul wrote in Romans, cheerfully expectant of God's calling. However you're coming this morning, I want you to, well, I would challenge you to use this time that we spend singing uh, to prepare your heart and set yourself up for good communication with God while we're here. Um, when we come to church, we want to be expectant of what he's going to do and hear, how we're going to hear from him to go out for the rest of the week, right? So really great way to start communication with God is by praising. It starts off, us on, off on a really good foot. Um, so we've got some classic praise songs. They're pretty upbeat. So if you're feeling tired, you're going to need to like shake it out and get, get a bit excited. We've got to kind of make our way up. So I'd love if you could stand with me if you're able. Um, and we're going to sing some very well-known songs. And yeah, use this time as a time to get ready to communicate with God, lifting up our praises to Him to start us.
Five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise and would take along extra oil. When the, when the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight they were roused by a shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming, come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. The five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil, and we don't have enough, our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were going to buy oil, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the, uh, the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside, calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe in me, I don't know you, so you too must keep watch. For you do not know that day or the hour of my return. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Good work. Thank you. We're going to continue our worship with the giving of our free will offering, and I encourage you to uh, just come and place your offering in the bowl he provided. And uh, our major pianist this morning is going to be playing a beautiful melody for us as we give in our offering. I haven't done this for such a long time. <laughs> I was, uh, we were worshipping at the Salvation Army Corps in Brisbane uh, early in the month and uh, 
the officer was able to give a nice welcome to us, which was kind of him, and he confessed that uh, when I was moved to, to uh, Taganong, he was uh, desperately sad because he had hopes of coming to Taganong. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's nice. People have, uh, have a feeling that this is a great place to be. And it is a great place to be. It's a great place to share fellowship together. Great place to be serving God together. Great place for good deeds. We're going to look at good, good works this morning. Just the preemptive strike about the, the sun, the, the skylights. Look, we've been trying for months to sort out a solution to the skylights just to take the harshness of the sun out. We value the warmth and value the sun, but the, it's a little bit bright. And uh, hopefully in the next uh, month or two we'll be resolving that. We certainly are, are talking to the right people to make that happen. I know that some of the bands are going to get a little bit hot under the collar as a result, but uh, that, that happens. And uh, good to see Marion here this morning. And you had uh, some surgery, did you, this morning? Uh, sorry, not this morning, this week. Did you? It's lovely to see you here this morning. Bless you. And uh, good to see everybody sharing together as we come back and worship this wonderful, wonderful God. So as I indicated, we're going to look at good works. Good works in 2022. Good to welcome the young marrieds too. Hey, lovely to see you guys. And uh, very good. I was going to ask some pertinent questions, but I think I'll save them for another day. So I guess the question is, are you ready for good works in 2022? It's a new year, and it's a new season for Tugwanon Salvos. <laughs> Got a text from Ros this morning. She's praying for us. And I sent back a text to say, Ros, we're praying for you, and we shared some of the things that we, we have to do to make sure that everything's working well for us for worship. So it was nice to share with Ros, from, uh, who was our, one of our, part of the leadership team here, uh, early, uh, late last year, and then, oh, I should say, last year. And as we know, it's now in Tasmania. What I want to do, what I want to say is that we should be intentional about 2022 and what we do, and that we do it well. How can we be intentional? How can we do really well in 2022? So I suggest that we be constantly, that means always, aware that we live in the presence of God. Let's be constantly aware we are living in the presence of God. And when we, when we are conscious of God like this, we can do no less than live really well. When we are conscious of God, and we are with Him in that way, we can do nothing less than do very, very well. Reminds me of the, the junior soldier pledge that after they say, that before it they say, God helping me, I will. And in the senior soldier uh, swearing in service, they also say, God helping me, I will. And they pledge themselves to God. So let's live 2022 with Christian purpose, joy and enthusiasm. Not just for ourselves, but let's live 2022 well for others, that others may be drawn to God by the good works we do in His name. Good works, I might add, that God has already planned for us to achieve. Now, the story of the ten bridesmaids serves as a constant reminder to be ready for whatever God has planned for us. But before we go there, what are good works? Let's examine what good works might be. Good works are the evidence or outcome of a healthy relationship with God. You know, the kind of relationship where, where you talk with God, share ideas and secrets and, and speak and, and seek His advice and strength and vision. That's the healthy relationship with God. So what's on your list of good works. Who's got some suggestions for me this morning from your list or off the top of your head what might be good works in 2022? Good works that you might do or, or others might consider.
Very good. Thanks for that. Beautiful. Um, we'll run a microphone around. That's what we'll do. We'll make that happen. Yes, if I couldn't hear that. I just need someone to run this mic around pretty please. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've got someone. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'll believe it. Thanks, Bruce. Way back. We'll have that again. Have that again. Someone else might have ideas too. Just toy Bruce and just there. Let the Lord work through you. Be thankful for what the Lord has done for you. Continue to ask the Lord what I should do and pray for others. Thank you very much. Ask the Lord what I should do. You know? You can't go wrong if you ask God what you should do. Then you're doing good works. Good works that God has already prepared for you, according to Scripture. Someone else? What about a school? Anybody got any ideas? Good works you might do at school? Oh. I've just put down to Bob and I um, a continuation of this year of what we've been doing. And God helping us, Bible study, here today, part time, the office for Bob, and being a family neighbour where we live. Because there's a lot of shuttings. Yes. Very good. Thanks for that. Today. Thanks for that. Good neighbour, lots of shuttings. Good works for 2022. There's a list. Someone else? The ideal is that we do the extremes of the church one after the other, so Bruce just gets around a bit. It's good for you. Some. Perfect. Listen more and be available. Listen more and be available. Very good. Be available. Once again, that's uh, awaiting instructions, isn't it? When you say you're being available, I'm ready to do something, to be something for someone. Good works. Where do they come from? They don't always come from a good heart. You know that, right? Thanks, Bruce. That'll be fine. Thank you. Anyone can do good works. Anybody can help the elderly across the street. But not all good works are a sign of faith in God. The good works we want to focus on this morning are those inspired and often spontaneous actions that point to God. They are a witness to God's influence and that is living in the presence of God. We come back to this living in the presence of God. The identifying elements of good works is that the works are inspired by God and then naturally demonstrated by God's sons and daughters in everyday life. So that's in home, at school, at college, university, shopping, work, and work, work seeking and relaxing with mates. Always bear in mind, I'm in, in the presence of God here. And what can I do to demonstrate a connection between myself and him so that others might feel that that's something they would like to enjoy. Maybe you want to review your list about what good works might be in the light of what's been said today. The Bible has a bit to say about good works. Matthew 5, 16 suggests that your good works should shine for everyone to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Galatians 6.9 suggests that we not tire nor retire. And one day I'll tell you about my tyre story. I had far too many fat tyres on holidays. But it's not related to this tyre. Of course, it's different spelling. Unless, of course, you're in America where they do spell it differently to the way we spell it. But I digress. Do not tire from doing what is good. Because good works will reap a harvest of blessing. Hebrews 10 verse 24 offers a, offers a timely suggestion. It suggests we, we think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And lastly, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And this is, this is a marvellous statement for us today and it supports our reading from Matthew 25. It informs Christians 
that we are God's masterpiece and that God has created us new through Jesus Christ. So that, and there is uh, the statement that says there's a purpose, so that we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. God has planned things for each of us to accomplish good works. Did you even realize that that was the case, that God had planned good works for you to accomplish? So what are good works? The identifying nature of good works is that the works are inspired by God and naturally demonstrated by God's sons and daughters in everyday life. So God has works in mind for you to accomplish. I want to just emphasize that this morning. <clears throat> In our Bible story, five bridesmaids ran out of oil for their lamps. And as a consequence, were not able to successfully complete their privileged task of welcoming the groom. The spiritual intent of this parable is to impress upon people that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, that they need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But also the text lends itself to consider what are the resources people might need to push through and undertake to completion God's good, God's planned good works for them. So let's interpret together the implications today of the actions of those five bridesmaids who were simply not ready, not prepared for, not prepared to complete the good works God had in mind for them. Scripture doesn't say that the bridesmaids were late. <clears throat> they stayed late. And in the absence of anything specific, we assume they arrived at their post on time. Now, there are many believers today who, just like the bridesmaids, arrive on time, put in the time, and appear to be ready to serve, the, serve through the church and even in the community. Lots and lots of believers start off their Christian journey in this way. But are they truly ready? Scripture doesn't say that their lamps were empty. They began this good work with good intentions. Their lamps in hand, their, the wicks trimmed, and, the, and uh, with them was enough oil, or so they thought. And there are many believers today who live their relationship with God like like driving on the smell of an oily rag or running low or worst of all, running on empty. <clears throat> it's not God stammering for the truth and avoiding eye contact when we, the people of God called to be his disciples, are not drawing deeply from the reserves of love and purpose, joy and spiritual authority. It's not God at fault. It's that we're not doing something there something deep in it. It's difficult to watch some believers live close to spiritual emptiness. Scripture doesn't say that the bridesmaid, that a bridesmaid was missing or that one of them had forgotten their lamp. No, they were all there and initially they were all ready to complete this good work. And I guess that there are believers who join the club, so to speak, and in doing so, they eventually rely on the religious surroundings for credibility. Christians by association, so to speak. They can't last. They're not drawing on the right fuel. Scripture says that all the bridesmaids fell asleep. And as I look around this morning, I don't see any bridesmaids sleeping. I wonder if this was a missed opportunity for at least five of the bridesmaids. Occasionally, we don't use our time well. And consequently, tiredness or, or even a focus on a preferred pastime can keep us from being aware of those areas where our preparedness ought to be improved. And just one more observation this morning. Scripture records that there was a bit of a panic happening when the five bridesmaids realized that they didn't have enough oil to fulfill their privileged role. 
panic. Too much to do. Too many irons in the fires and, and not off hands. No way to keep track of things. A spiritually weak life subjected to a strong adversary in the person of Satan and sin who delights to derail people using human weaknesses. Who delights to derail people using human weaknesses. And at this point, you know, in the story, I often pause and wonder. I wonder if the unpreparedness for good works might have been best remedied there and then by confession. You know? It could have gone something like this. My sisters, I have run out of oil. Please forgive me. May I stand with you and meet the Master under the light you share. Imagine yourself as a bridesmaid with a lamp that's burning brightly and you're confident you have all the oil you need. And beside you is a bridesmaid whose wick is faltering, whose flame is flickering, who's really worried about being at her post as, as was requested. Surely we have a role in this world of sharing our light with others, don't you think? And if they don't come alongside us, can't we see if can't we recognize a flickering flame when we see it spiritually? And can't we go to those people and offer them our support? Are you ready for the good works God has in mind for you to complete in 2022? Frankly, I'm looking forward to an oil-rich 2022. What about you? I'm praying for this and have been praying for this. That 2022 might be a year full of opportunity for good works. And I've been praying for a long line of people, salvos, serving here and there, ready and well prepared, lamps filled, wicks trimmed. And most of all, I'm praying, and you can read this as I say, most of all, I am praying that the choices you make this year concerning what ultimately facilitates spiritual replenishment for you will provide more than enough reserves for you to know you're in God's hands and working on the good works he has planned for you to accomplish. I'm praying for this church that it be the marvellous structure it is in the community, so noticeable, so obvious, but on a spiritual plane, that we be noticeable, that we be obvious, that we be proactive in our spiritual works in the lives of others. So let's live for others. Let's live 2022 well for others. So that other people may be drawn to God by the good works we do in His name. Good works, as I say, that God has already planned for you to achieve, to accomplish. So what do you, what do you, what do you desperately need to do to be confident that you will live uh, in 2022 with Christian purpose, joy, and enthusiasm? enthusiasm. What do you desperately need to do to be certain that you are living in the presence of God? 
that that presence is the presence shining his everlasting light on your footsteps. I need to underscore here, good works are the evidence or outcome of a healthy relationship with God. Lots of people can do good works. You don't have to have faith in God to be a good person. But God calls us to step beyond that and be a Christian, faith-filled, committed to the kind of relationship where we talk to God, share ideas and secrets, and seek His advice, and draw strength and vision for every opportunity. When you think of it, God is really counting on us to be his holy people, making a difference in, in an unholy world. God is calling all Christians to be his holy people, making a difference in this unholy world. We're going to spend a few moments in reflection and then bring conclusion to worship. And it's the custom of the Salvation Army, as you know, that uh, should people feel that the Holy Spirit has spoken to them and, uh, and, and given a sense of guidance or chastised us, perhaps, for something we've, we haven't finalised, we haven't accomplished. A blessing from God that's not quite been full because we've not finished what we've supposed to have been set out to achieve. Perhaps there's an obstacle for us in our faithfulness to God at this time. Perhaps we're sharing God with other things and not being able to make God that principal presence affecting our lives. And it could be, if that's the case this morning, that you want to come to the place of prayer, you're encouraged to do so. If you come and kneel at this place of prayer, someone under God's leading will come and accomplish their works with you and speak to you about your spiritual journey and the milestones that you may or may not have reached. We're going to sing a beautiful song, Grace Alone. Every promise we can make, every prayer and step of faith, every difference we will make is only by God's grace. And when we sing that only by God's grace, I want you to read this, read into it this idea. Plan. Good works as planned by God for us to accomplish. Nothing less, nothing more. It can be achieved only by His grace. Good works as planned by God for us to accomplish. Nothing less and nothing more. So let's join together and sing this through. We'll be helped by the uh, image on the wall and the music. And let's enjoy this song. Let's make this song a reflection and let's be responsive with God is speaking to us. Perhaps you'd like to make your way to the place of prayer and just find healing there and find an opportunity for resetting your thinking and your commitment to this wonderful God who has a plan for our lives to be fruitful and purposeful and spiritually enthusiastic. Let's share this song.
Dear Father God, we thank you for the words of that song and for the music and for the richness that comes to us when we're thoroughly certain we're in your presence. Father, we pray for the young people if they prepare for school this week and we ask that that be the case that you really that your presence be evident to them, that it might give them courage, it might give them strength, it might shelter and protect them also. And Father, we pray for the teachers, the teachers in our congregation, and the teachers, all the teachers returning to their, to their posts. We pray for those who are our school teachers. We pray for parents who might be standing in for school teachers. We ask, Father, that you provide them time, opportunity, insight into their child and their child's education. And we pray, Father, for their, their health and their safety and their direction. Thank you for this day, Father, your mighty, wonderful God. It's a timely lesson for us that we need to be in your presence all the time even be aware of what you have planned for us to accomplish in your name. Thank you for those who knelt and for those who felt your spirit on them in a special way. The of your Holy Spirit into their lives we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Bless you. It's good to have been together to worship. We're going to uh, uh, lead or close worship with a very joyful song. Give me oil in my lamp. It's an oldie but a goodie. And it's also nice to see some visitors. Welcome some visitors who are here today. But let's stand together and uh, sing. Give me, give me joy in my heart. Keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart. I pray. Keep me, give me joy in my, in my heart. Keep me praising. Keep me praising till the break of day. Thanks very much, Major Sandra.
three on my uh, my list. I often wonder. I've got to ask myself. I often wonder why uh, Salvation Nami in the songbook chose to emphasise the resting. Give me rest, you know, plenty of rest. I'm thinking, no, it's not what it's about. <laughs> but uh, there you have it. Now, our story from Matthew does not appear anywhere else in the New Testament. However, to underscore the lesson this morning, we take our benediction from Luke chapter 12. When speaking of our relationship with other people, Jesus strongly warns against greed, that is, hoarding things and not sharing and being too focused on earthly things when the world needs good works. And Jesus con concludes his chat with these words as a segue into being ready for the coming of the Lord. And take this word with you to affirm what God has said to you today. Luke chapter 12 verse 35, be ready for action and have, or as the uh, New Living Translation says, keep your lamps burning. And if you read that, you'll find that that's uh, just a marvellous verse inserted to give reference to what follows. But be ready for action and have your lamps burning. God bless you as you uh, enjoy the, the, the day and what week is yours under God's blessing. Thank you. God bless you.